My name is Damien Crawford. I'm in the uh, UK. I'm the head of smart water networks and leakage over here. Uh, my presentation today is going to be about smart data and how AI and smart networks are revolutionising the UK water industry and in particular focused on Yorkshire water where we've just attended, finished one of the big trials for the UK. So we're going to cover off, we're going to cover off what are the challenges in the UK at the moment for the water industry, what's the challenges that face Yorkshire water, how are we facing up to these challenges, smart water networks and talking in particular about Hadfield smart network trial and really future opportunities for smart networks going forward globally. So what's the challenges being faced by the UK water industry? Well, we have a very strong regulator in the UK, Ofwat, and they're demanding leakage reductions by 15% by 2025. And with that, they're actually asking, saying that they've got no additional funding to be given out to the actual UK water companies. So a very big challenge if you think that the, uh, the biggest drop in leakage we've had in the UK has been about 5% over a five year period. So to be able to triple that is quite incredible. Also, the UK government um, very much involved now regarding the environmental impact. They've said, well, 15% is great by 2025, but in actual fact, they've now set as a target of a 50% reduction by 2040. And as well, pressure coming from customers. So a lot of our clients are telling customers, look, be more uh, water, look at water usage and be more efficient. But what the customers are telling us is they want us to be more water efficient as well and to reduce leakage. And you may think that it always rains in the UK, but unfortunately we do have the wrong type of rain. And what do I mean by that? Well, we get a lot of rainfall in the winter, but we get very reduced rainfall during the summer period. And as a consequence of that, we've got around about 23 water areas now in the UK that are under water stress. If you see the actual um, map on the right hand side, those red areas are water stressed areas all across the uh, southern part of the UK. And also with rainfall, we're seeing quite dramatic changes in rainfall. So as I said, we're seeing about 20% less rainfall during the summer months and about 20% increase in rainfall during the winter months. And that combined with population changes as well in the UK, where we're expecting to see about a 20% increase in population in the UK over the next 20 years. So what challenges face Yorkshire Water in particular? So as well as having the target 15% reduction, they've also got to reduce capita consumption by 9%. They've got to impact uh, reduce water interruptions by 25%. And customer contacts as well due to water quality issues or due to uh, no interruptions or interruption supplies, 34% reductions. And unfortunately, as well for Yorkshire Water, they've said yeah, achieve all this, but we don't want to give you any additional money. And in actual fact, we want you to give money back to the customers. So they're actually asking to reduce bills by 16 percent and saving customers about 801 million pounds over the five year amp period. And if we don't do that, uh, we've got very, very significant penalties as well that have been put on to the water company. So how do we do this? How do we square this circle where we've got no extra money? but we need to deliver outstanding performance. Well, to do that, it really is like a paradigm shift. We need to move away from the traditional active leakage control and move more into innovation and look at smarter ways of working as strategic and working more strategically as imperative. Offwort, our regulator, did actually say to us, well, yeah, this is what we want you to do. And Offwort said they want innovation to not be just a nice thing, and change as usual won't be enough. Without innovating, companies will not and cannot deliver enough of what matters to customers in the environment or play a leading part in helping the sector. So innovation is the key. So smart analytics. People may know about SWAN and about the five layers of smart analytics. Just talk through those five layers. So the first two layers is the physical layer and what's called the sensing and control layer. That's what's called the wet side. That's actually what's on site in the field. Then above that, you've got layers three, four and five. And this is where you start pulling all this data together and looking at data management and how you display that. And then fiat five is where you actually pull the smart analytics together. How we can use data fusion to actually make more informed decisions. For Stantec though, we want to go beyond that. The next phase for us is all about system thinking and system thinking is about level six and seven. This is where you actually have the system talking to it. You actually have automation of the system. Level six is operated assisted. assisted. Level seven is actually operated supported. That's where you're really going by fly by wire 
and literally letting the system run the system to optimize the system as part of that. So smart water networks for Yorkshire water. So we've done an extensive trial for Yorkshire water in a place called Hadfield in Sheffield. And we've literally, the size of this is the, the largest UK trial. It's covering about 84 district metered areas, about 300 kilometers of water pipes and about 60,000 properties. It's the biggest industry collaboration in the UK. 19 industry leading companies have set aside any rivalries and they've basically come together and said, yeah, we'll help deliver this. Sensors wise, we've deployed an additional 4,000 sensors in the network, be these pressure, transient, water quality, acoustic, hydrophones, all this extra data feeding into this advanced metering infrastructure area. And finally, the platform. We were considering using our own platform SIA, but for the time being, we decided for maturity levels that we were going to pick one off the shelf. So we used the Xylem View platform, which was based on AWS to actually bring all this analytics together. So what did this give us? So functionality wise, we managed to get a single visualization platform integrating into client and third party data systems. We created a, G a GIS digital twin. We've created a real time informed hydraulic model. We've created some really exciting analytics which involve AI and machine learning. We've done situational awareness tools to help during instant management. We've put an event hydraulic simulator in. We've also done alarm third party validation, and that's where when you pull all this data together, you can cluster it and get a better outcome. And this has allowed work prioritization. And again, network optimization has also been promoted. And what we say in the UK is we like to create a calm network. By having a calm network, you reduce the number of bursts and instants. And this is all being done as well by having predictive analytics and asset class management. And one of the things that we're very proud of as well, we put in a very good advanced metering infrastructure scheme. And in the UK, for the first time, we're actually bringing data in every 15 minutes to give us real big insights into customer consumption and also help us with leakage. What's been the outcomes in Yorkshire Water? Has it been a success? Well, just a couple of big numbers to throw at everybody. We've managed to achieve 97.3% of data assurance all those assets coming back in. It's a lot of the opportunity basically to lose data, but in actual fact, we managed to use to get 97.3% in it. So good data to start with is a key thing for smart networks. We've also looked at uh, leakage in high intensity areas and we've actually managed to reduce that by 32%. So that's quite incredible. In actual fact, we've actually found 50%, but we've only managed to fix 32% at the moment because 18% of it is actually on the customer side and we had some trouble getting some of the customers to fix their own leaks. And how is this done? Well, have we thrown loads of manpower at this? In actual fact, the system has allowed us to reduce RNO activity by 41%, and in reciprocal as well, a reduction in CO2 of 41% on all RNO activity in the area. Visible leaks have come down 57%, main repairs have come down, water quality contacts staggeringly come down 53%. And the system is processing approximately about 200,000 packets of data at the moment. And we've processed about 60 million so far since the start of the project. And again, some things we're very proud of. We created the largest LoRaWAN network in the UK, working with the smart meters and the AMI infrastructure. And it's the first platform as well to have this real time informed hydraulic model. And that really helps us with regarding predictive bursts and localized search analysis. The cost of the project, 2.8 million pounds. Cost of the actual savings year to date has been 1.9. That means that this project is going to pay itself off after a year and a half, which is which I have to say we're very proud of.